Okay, we're back. We're going to resume with chapter 13, our uh, triangle nodes and quadrilateral nodes. And so far, what we've done is uh, common fields, normal vector, and triangle set. So our next step is to continue on with triangle fan set. So here we go. What's, uh, what's up with this node? First, uh, the motivation is the same. We want an efficient way to get a bunch of triangles. Now, the difference on this one is that the uh, triangles have a single common vertex. And what does that mean? Well, it's, it's fan as in handheld fan uh, uh, that you would wave back and forth. So uh, the fan would look something like this. Okay, that's the basic idea. Single common vertex at the bottom when we're drawing a triangle fan set. And so uh, that means we can take advantage of that structure when we're drawing the node and get the uh, triangles defined in this fan a little more simply. So. Let's take a look at that. Here's uh, an example triangle fan set down. And when we were defining the points, we could go like this. When we go ABC as such, those three points define our first triangle. And then when we draw one more point, D, that gets our next triangle. And then we add another point, E, we get our third triangle, and so on. We add one more point, F, and we get our uh, next triangle. So one, two, three, four triangles, A, B, C, D, E, F, six. So four triangles out of six points. Pretty efficient. And that matches our little metric here. Okay, so if our fan count for that was six points in this fan count, that yielded four triangles in the triangle fan set. Okay, so you can see that this can be a very efficient way to represent multiple triangles. However, uh, a key constraint on this is uh, it better be pretty small because there's only so many triangles you can connect to a single point before it gets pretty darn crowded in there. All right, so uh, uh, it does work does work pretty well. If we find, however, that we're using uh, lots of triangle fan sets, so for example, if we uh, wanted to put a triangle fan set, let's say we finished off that we added point B at the end, then we'd have that blob, then we might put another triangle fan set here, and then another triangle fan set here. If we uh, outline each triangle fan set, Maybe I should have worked with a clean sheet of paper here, but we'll see how it goes. We have three triangle fan sets. If we then say, well, how much repetition was there in there? Well, uh, this point got repeated multiple times. This point got repeated multiple times. That point got repeated multiple times. That point got repeated multiple times. So you can see if these fans are coincident, if they're lining up next to each other, there's still going to be a lot of reuse of points. <coughs> Furthermore, when we close the fan, like in our very first one, when we close this fan, point B would have been repeated as well. So we can expect the same thing. We might expect that there's two or more repetition points for each fan. So good for small pieces of geometry. For lots of geometry, it's going to start stepping on each other, and we'll find that because the triangle fan set is simply ordered, there's no indexing there, those duplicate points have to get repeated, so there's a trade-off. <coughs> uh, please put in the note.
notes that we're going to have some edits in this one. Okay. Uh, help edits <laughs> uh, And I might even have to break down and put my damn sweater back on, but okay. that would that would completely clobber my whole shirt strategy for the, <laughs> the last half year. You found us on the slides, right, Fred? Yeah, yeah I'm good, thanks. Good, and thanks for muting, too. Uh, you were <laughs> pretty scraggly at the beginning there. Yeah. Wow, we got a whole slide done. Okay, so there are the basics of the Triangle Fence Act. Uh, Fred, could you mute again, please? Okay, so there are the basics for triangle fan set. Uh, let's look at this guy now. Here's the editor for triangle fan set. You can see that we have um, one big triangle fan set, and this triangle fan set itself has. Uh, okay, I give. Where's the pen? <laughs> Uh, please let the notes show yeah. Don still, once again, how many times I've lost count, needs a string on the pen. Okay. Ah, guess what? I found it. Amazing. Boy, all the false starts today. Okay, so there are the uh, basics for triangle fan set. Let's look at the note and see what's in there. Uh, here we have a single triangle fan set node, but with two uh, fans inside there. And we can tell that there's two, not just from the picture, but from the fan count field, where we have two values, 9 and 6. So what does that mean? What that means is the first fan has nine points in it, and the second is six points per fan. And so therefore, when we open up the coordinate node on this guy, we should expect to see 15 points. What else can we say about this guy? Well, uh, because we have colors that match, and because there's no indexing, everything's right in order, we should also expect to see 15 color values. 15 point values, 15 color values. We could further say that um, there will be repetition in the color values as well as the fan set points if you wanted the colors identical for any overlapping points. Since we drew two fans here, then there's not so much overlap, probably no overlap, but uh, we can see them both here, and here's the uh, original rendering uh, on the left and a wireframe rendering on the right. Now, I've superimposed on the slide set here the actual indices for each one, and maybe what we should do is uh, change the color. No, I guess if you look very closely in here, I, I wanted them to print out, but if you look very closely at your slides, you'll see that the first numbers are in black, and the second set of numbers are in a dark blue. So uh, hopefully you can keep track of where those points are. So let's take a look now at actual X3D edit. And so there's our triangle. Oh, let's get the right scene here. Triangle fan set. Okay. And triangle fan set. Doesn't look right. There we go. Now it looks good. Okay, you can see our nodes up here. We can see that these are distinctly different. As I move them around, you can uh, see the 3D is 
spatial relationships between them a little bit. Uh, if we go into the scene, triangle fan set, see the node itself, itself is pretty, pretty simple. Uh, our fan count has the two values, 9 and 6. So let's do some counting checks in here. Okay, sure enough, there's 15 total points. Why 15? Because it goes from 0 to 14. Let's also check the try again here. There we go. Here's our color array. And we have 17. Excuse me, 18 point. Oh, that's all right. We just copied a color node from another scene and used that. If there are more colors than coordinates, that's not a problem. Unless that's not what you intended, then it could be a real problem and you might have an extra color or a mix up in there. So, uh, one of the things we're going to do, and let's experiment with this right now, is we have a brand new feature that we're testing here at MPS. And uh, by the time you see this video, it will probably be out in the public. But if you go to the X3D Quality Assurance menu, we have a new menu item there called Validate XML. And so now what it's going to do is test this scene, and we're going to find that, sure enough, it passes XML well-formed, it passes XML validation, and it even passed, uh, let's see what we got on schema here. Schema validation was fine, but we found some new issues in here. We found Schematron is our new feature. XML Schematron is a bunch of rules for checking quality that previously we didn't have uh, in there necessarily. So what can we find on here? Well, it found a couple of things. Found uh, immersive was too high a profile. It found that uh, we didn't have our creator for author's name. That's kind of surprising. And uh, we found a shape that didn't have uh, an appearance enough. Okay, well that's pretty cool. That's good quality control. Let's try to fix those. Okay, so first off, the shape without an appearance. I think we can look at this and go, oh yeah, 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 there's a shape with no appearance because we used color nodes. So let's fix the rule uh, and we'll modify the rule to say shape without appearance is okay if color nodes are present. So we'll get rid of that. That's an overly strict rule. The next one was where's the creator on here? Well, <coughs> okay, that's now fixed and uh, Open up that output window again. <coughs> oh yeah, our, uh, our profile can be a lower level. So we can, uh, if I delete it in space, it'll prompt us here. So we'll change it to interactive. We could have also used a little pop-up pane. So let's test this scene again now. Uh, I'll save it so that this gets operated on properly. And We'll run our tests, and if this all flies, and we just have that one rule about shape, then we're okay. Oh, it's, look at that, I didn't even put the right one in. So let's try again. Interchange, very simple. One more check. Now, what do you guys think? Should we split out separate tests for DTD, Schema, and Schematron, or would you always like all of them? What do you think, Brett? I would have them separate, let the user choose, and then you know maybe have a, an option that would run all three. Okay. You guys agree? Yeah. Will it make the menu too cluttered? 
Very good, we'll do that. And we'll get rid of this extraneous rule right here. Okay, so it looks like we've got a nice improvement to this scene. Uh, let's put today's date in, which is the 12th of November. And we're ready to commit that to version control, so that will be in the next build. face. Uh, we found some quality control things that we never, well we could have figured them out before, but unless it's right there getting prompted to you, you might not. So this is a good thing. Okay, triangle fan set. Uh, further thing for the, the notes on the Schematron rules is that we will, besides relaxing the shape appearance rule, we'll also put in a check here that says if you have coordinates and the point count is less than the sum of your fan counts, it should tell you that. It should say, hey, you don't have enough points. We might want to have it tell you, hey, you've got a few extra points. Is that okay? What do you, what do you guys think? Would you like an information rule as well as a warning? Uh, I guess the first one would be an error if you had insufficient points. The second would be information. Hey, you got some extras. Yes. You would like that feature? Right. Without the information. Okay, you agree, okay. You agree uh, Fred? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, another case in point is that when I've been working with um, some of the scripts, if I have, uh, you know, if I'm trying to use a variable that I haven't defined somehow, um, you know, there really isn't any feedback other than it just doesn't work. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, anything like that is definitely helpful, especially for new users. Okay, great. So let's uh, let's make an assignment for everybody then, uh, Chris, and that is uh, please make me a wish list of the gotchas that you wish you had had support on before. Now, just to be thorough here, I, I will point out that if you do the export from X3D and expect export to Classic Vermal using the XSLT style sheet, which I have on the screen now. This will give you a pretty equivalent set of rules. Uh, there are a lot of strict checks in there, and I hope to bring some of those back over into Schematron. But people are often not exporting, so right now this is sort of a sidestep quality control check that you can do. As we get more mature, we'll get all of those rules uh, captured in the Schematron. And uh, since it's quality, we'll tend to, I think we'll err on the side of verbose give you information warning as well as warnings and, and errors. Okay, so a deep dive, but there we go with uh, triangle fan set. So let's get back now to our next note. There uh, are warnings. Okay. Triangle strip set. Uh, sometimes you'll see people abbreviate this uh, TFS. Excuse me. Get my spell checker going. TSS. The previous one was TFS. Uh, all right, so long strips of geometry. So this is quite similar to the fan with the relaxation that it no longer. Uh, connects each point back to the center, but rather builds a strip as you go. So you can sort of follow the yellow brick road here and build these things one point at a time. And once again, we see after we add three triangles, ABC, excuse me, three vertices, ABC, you get our first triangle, triangle one. And then with each subsequent point, D, E, and F, we'll get an additional triangle. So we see the same counting metric here. Uh, the actual field is called strip count, quite similar to fan count, but obviously different name to match the node. We also see that there's uh, two more points than there are triangles out of this. Uh, you could ask the philosophical question, gee, if some points are co coincident, uh, do you really have a triangle or not? Well, I'd say uh, 
yes, but a triangle of zero size. <laughs> but that's how we do it here. We are creating a strip, and that's how it'll get drawn, not just by extra d edit on the screen, but by the graphics hardware where it, where it gets pushed down. And um, so very similar, very similar to the previous node. The other uh, shared aspect to this is there are no negative one sentinel values like you find when you have indexed versions. In the indices, we, we separate the index numbers by negative one. Well, there are no index here. So it's rather a count, a count for how many points in each strip. Let's look at this example. So we have our triangle strip set dot x3d node, and we see that our strip count is first five and then four. Okay, if we uh, look at these guys and then compare it and count up the number of points in each strip, sure enough we get five uh, strip count value and then four for the other one. Okay, and we have two different renderings of this uh, 3D. Uh, left is the regular rendering with different colors on each vertex and the right in wireframe node. I think it's pretty cool to see uh, XJ3D is very good at the uh, color per vertex and, and translates that and brings that across even in the wireframe mode and that can be a helpful way to keep track of which triangle is where. And so let's jump out now and take a look at our example. All right, triangle strip set. Open her up here. I uh, mean, we don't need the palette for this scene. Gives a little more room on this guy. And there's the scene. If I uh, rotate it, you can see that these are not planar. They're close to each other, but here you go. If we say 5 and 4 should equal 9, let's take a look at our coordinate points. Sure enough, we do have 9 coordinate points. And then for our colors, I bet we still have the same color node. No, we've stripped it down a little bit. We have nine colors here as well. And if you wanted to change a color, of course, you can just go to the color bar and swap that guy around. Okay. Uh, for cleanups, I expect we'll find the same thing. This would probably be interactive. Oh, by the way, to get that prompt there, I just hit uh, control space. That's the hotkey for getting prompted on what, if, if there are prompts, they will give you the, uh, the values like that. And then we also know we're missing a creator name, so we'll stick that guy in. And we'll stick in today's date. Just because I love validation so much, we'll run that validator one more time today. X3D, quality assurance, validate using all tests. <coughs> so it passed well formed, it passed DTD doctype validation, it passed schema validation, it's chunking away on the schematron rules. And uh, a current limitation for you guys if you do your X3D edit update today is uh, you have to be connected online for the schematron to work. It's, it's pulling down uh, the files off the network. We've uh, figured out how to, how to fix that, and that'll be uh, in the next version. And didn't like it. Okay, got a memory error somehow. Okay, so we'll check on that. And as a result, I won't. Well, since we passed all the other validation, yes, I will check it out. All right, 
so we've gone through triangle set, triangle fan set, and triangle strip set. Let's take a look at our notes now. Which brings us up to one more uh, unordered, uh, excuse me, ordered but not indexed node, and that is quadset. Okay, so uh, quite similar to uh, triangle set, except it is for quads only. So let's say that in the notes here, similar to triangle set. And then uh, that means no indexing, no negative one sentinel values, no nothing. We're just dropping in points four at a time. Boom, 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 boom. With every four points, then uh, <coughs> we get a new quad. Now there is a gotcha in here. Um, Nota bene. Pay attention. If you don't have your uh, CAD geometry component listed, uh, this won't take effect because for obscure spec reasons, we put quad set not in with the other uh, geometry nodes, but they're in the uh, CAD profile. So if you think about it, quad set is kind of redundant, right? You could define each quad with two triangles, right? It'll take more points, at least depending if we just use triangle set, but you can do it. And so since we try to be minimalist and, and avoid what they said called node bloat in the spec, we for a long time we didn't have quad set, but when we added the other CAD nodes, we found that so many computer-aided design CAD tools out there insisted on quads that the argument won the day, let's add quad set to the vocabulary, to the repertoire. So here we go. Uh, this is what that node looks like. Uh, the fields couldn't be simpler. It's just the shared common fields, but there's no counting, no nothing. Uh, no counting, no indexing, whatever. It's just four points at a time. And we get our different quads. Excuse me, I labeled those pretty poorly. Let's try again. In fact, let's do it uh, in the editor so we can count a little better here. What we expect to see is two quad set nodes. So let's see if we actually get that. Here's our quad set scene. And then here is our component that levels it in CAD geometry. If you're adding that in and you want to edit it, it's pretty quick uh, because we give you all the legal choices in here. If we look at our quad set node, just like triangle set, we'll expect it to be very simple. It just has the common fields, check in boxes. And then if we count our coordinates, the coordinate is really where we tell you how many are there. Okay, 0 through 7, there are 8 points. We'd expect 2 quads. So uh, this is another good counting check that we can add to Schematron. Uh, and what we'll do in there is make sure that there is a multiple of four times three values per coordinate. So in other words, a multiple of 12 numeric values in the point array. If not, then it's not an even number of quads. And you've got a fragment in there. The spec says ignore fragments. I think it's better to avoid errors so that you get what you expect. And uh, so we'll, we'll have it uh, inspect that for you and make sure you get the right number of values in there. Once again, uh, color node has the same. So since we have the same number of values as for colors as there are quads, I'd expect that to work just as is. Now it seems as though our uh, XJ3D doesn't want to play here, so let's try one of our other tools. Excuse me, let's go, let's try instant reality again. Oh, 
Okay, so there are our two quads. Now let's have a little fun with this. If we change our uh, color per vertex from yes color per vertex to no, meaning color per quad, let's save that guy, let's refresh, and we should just see the first two colors on the list come up. Unless, of course, it's not paying attention to it. So let's launch them all. Fifty's failing. That's the same error we got a second ago. Squirrel is handling it, but not paying attention to the color per vertex. Octaga paid attention. Gave us a single color uh, per quad instead of per vertex. And uh, bit management failed. Okay, so <laughs> one out of eight ain't bad. I don't know. One out of eight ain't good, but it's better than zero. So somebody's paying attention. Uh, if you want to keep track of who's doing what, we have uh, fleshed out, finished the table now of player support. And if we look at the player support for who's claiming support for the uh, CAD component, well, heck, there it is right at the very top. CAD geometry, we can see that Better than half of them claim support for CAD geometry, but this is an interesting bug. We found most of them are ignoring the uh, color per vertex field. Okay, since daylight encourages good behavior, I hope getting these tests out there, easy to run, easy to report, makes it easier and easier for people to get their quality control up. Okay, so no indexing, no negative one. Here are our points. Here are our tooltips. And here we are. We've now finished the ordered polygonal nodes. All four similar. So as we get to the next stage from the ordered nodes, we'll look at how do we draw those same exact things, triangles, fan sets, strip sets and quad sets, but this time with indexing. And those differences will be what we pay attention to on our next lesson. All right, see you then.